guys, today I got some pretty confusing looking nails for you. Not sure what to call them, but how about gradient intricate diamond 3D cube pattern? I don't know. I was 100% inspired by the amazing Lucy of Lucy stash and I totally stole her idea. It's fine because I'm giving her credit, so it's not stealing, okay? But obviously being me, I had to incorporate a gradient somehow to make it even more complicated. I start with a white base coat, and I've never said that before in any of my video tutorials. It's Color Club's French tip, and the link is below. Then I'm gonna smack on some Simply Peel, which is a liquid latex barrier that I use to peel off the messy gradient stuff. And you can watch my video if you haven't seen it already, which you better of, because if you didn't, we're not friends. What's the best peel-off stuff? We'll show you what is the best peel-off stuff. I'm applying two neonish coral orangish colors from Live Love Polish, and the link is below, to a makeup sponge that I'm going to sponge on the nail and make a gradient with. Now these two colors are actually the only colors in this entire mani, because it's just black and white aside from this. And I know what you're thinking. Where is Simply Nail Logical? What have you done with her? And you want to know what I'm thinking? You don't even know my real name, do you? It's not Simply Nail Logical. It's Christine. Oh my god. I have a name. So now I'm going to peel off my Simply Peel and she's giving me a little bit of trouble today. She's not in the best of moods, but that's okay because I just take a little toothpick and pick out those tiny little pieces that get stuck. And then I take my new cleanup brush from Twinkle G, which you can use my code SIMPLY to get 10% off. Um, and it's awesome so far. I haven't seen any stupid little bristles fall off or fray or go to its deathbed because of acetone. When you clean up around your nails with acetone though, your skin dries out and turns white and it looks ugly for pictures. So we gotta fix that. So I just take an empty pen of nail oil, this is my favorite kind, Bliss Kiss, and I use the empty pen so it just gives off a tiny little bit of oil and not too much. I'm adding a quick dry top coat because we're going to use nail vinyls next, and then I let it dry for about 15 to 20 minutes. Hey look, let's use some nail vinyls, not like I've ever used those before. So I peel off these chevron skinny nail vinyls I got from twinkletea.com, you can use my code for those too and place it on the nail. And I'm actually going to be strategic about this placement. You'll see. So I'm placing the first one just smack in the middle, but when I put the second one down, I'm actually gonna make the points of the chevron zigzag things touch. So they're like making out. Nail vinyls are making out. So I'm just gonna continue that on both sides of the nail so that it actually forms a bunch of mini diamonds. Press the vinyls down very firmly around the cuticle so you can make sure it's secure and then Oh my god, I'm distracted by the hollow I'm wearing on my other hand. I take my white polish again, cover the vinyls, and quickly peel off the vinyls. The reason why the white polish is looking a little stringy when I peel off the vinyls is because I'm working under a really hot lamp. So tip, don't work under a really hot lamp if you don't have to. Oh my god, what's happening? It's the fear of peeling off your entire mani with the nail vinyl. Don't worry, it's only because I'm using a peel-off base coat. That's right, I use peel-off base coat under all my manis because I want to be able to take them off really quickly and change my nails every like two seconds, right? So now comes the hard part of using a striping brush and freehanding the design. Yeah, I can't rely on nail vinyls for this part. So I just take a small striping brush, dip it in black acrylic paint, and I'm just going along outlining all the diamonds in black. And this is hard because, as you may remember, I can't actually paint, okay? I mostly rely on nail vinyls and like gradients to distract you from the fact that I can't actually paint. My tip to all my fellow imposter painters out there is to use a really long striping brush. When you use a longer brush, it's a lot easier to paint a straight line. I don't really know how to explain. It's like the physics of the longer brush versus a shorter brush or something. I don't know. Someone who's a physicist, who can help me with this? Please leave a comment. I don't know why. The next step is to fill in the little zigzag things with a line that kind of makes it look like a 3D box. And I guess that's where Lucy Stash got her idea to call it a 3D cube mani. Um, but obviously it had to be different and call it intricate diamonds because that makes so much more sense. Okay, I'm super sick of painting little lines. Aren't you super sick of watching me? Time to add a top coat and finish this stuff. 
I'm using Essie's Mad About You matte top coat because I kind of thought it looked kind of retro cool for it to be matte, kind of like a 70s couch or something out of Mad Men. And there you go, mini intricate box gradient chevron diamond things. And if I shake my hand really fast, it looks like kittens are flying. Don't you see the kittens? Look, it's an optical illusion. I see tiny kittens flying on my nails. Well, thanks for watching. Menchie especially thanks you for watching because she's super happy that she now has 20,000 subscribers who basically just subscribed to see the same face of her at the end of the videos. So if you want to keep seeing Menchie's same face at the end of all my videos, you should probably make sure you're subscribed too. Thanks for watching.